welcome to the ship show if you don't know why we call it that you're about to find out jeff newbarth is your host happy tuesday everybody what's going on jeff and lex in here we have one of the longest ship shows <laughs> in the history of the ship show coming to you today welcome to the ship show part of the Callaway podcast network do you subscribe to the show do you subscribe i do good of course didn't, that'd be weird subscribe soundcloud iTunes, Spotify, email us. And you're going to want to email us after this show because yeah. there's lots we're talking about. ShipshowCallawayGolf.com or call us 760-804-GOLF. And the first thing you need to do, Lex, the minute the ship show is over, mm-hmm. fade the music out, <laughs> is go listen to the Putter Pod. Definitely with, uh, listen to the Putter Luke, Pod. Starring Luke featuring in a minor bit role, Sean Toulon. <laughs> and if you believe that, you'll uh, believe anything. But there's two new putters that we're introducing today. They did a great job on the putter pod. They sure um, did. But we're still going to tell you about it here because I'm not sure everybody listens to both, though you should. Yeah, and we like to do a little cross-promotion every Ooh, now Oh, I like cross-promotion. Yeah, love cross-promotion. So definitely check out the putter pod, but we are introducing two new putters to our lineup today, the number 10 and Bird of Prey. Right, so those are both Stroke Lab shafted putters, mm-hmm. progressively shaped super high MOI, or as Ramon Ware calls them, <laughs> wah uh, multi-construction Mm-hmm. Putters, obviously, number 10. You've probably seen it out on tour. Maybe. We may have called it a times. prototype. Um, Phil may or may not have used it to shoot a 64 a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Taylor Gooch may or may not have used it to have uh, a super high finish uh, this past week in Houston. Mm-hmm. But the best way to get all the information is odysseygolf.com. Oh, odysseygolf.com yeah. is is the place to go. I'm not going to read what it says there. I know. I'm sorry. Um, and then because you're listening to this on Tuesday, and look, folks, this is going to get really confusing. We have three costume changes today. Right. We recorded a lot of this podcast with Kevin Napier, who's building Odyssey putters occasionally, yep. along with everything else in the tour truck. We did that last week. Yes, we did. Later today, uh, we have your good friend, who's going to become my new friend, Jason Tardick, yeah. of Bachelor fame. Yes, He's going to be joining fame. us. Caitlin Bristow's here, though she's going to be on your she's podcast, The Girls and Golf Pod. Yep. That's on another day. Yep. Um, this is just going to get confusing. But anyway, the good <laughs> news for those of you at home is by the time you're listening to this on Tuesday the 15th, you can pre-order number 10 and Bird of Prey right now. Yeah, it's awesome. And even better news, they're going to get to you in like two weeks. Yeah. So November 1st, they're in stores. Mm-hmm. Um, I highly, highly recommend... Uh, that you try b- both these putters. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm I've been putting great all summer with an Atlanta. I'm very excited to put a number ten in my hands. I've always been a mallet gal myself. Never really Do had you have a much of a that blade. Says that? I gal? should. I'm gonna hit up Finley for that. Yeah, definitely on Thursday during our A15. I would much podcast. rather have a sign that says mallet gal than to have a sign that says big robe guy. <laughs> By the way, can you send that picture to uh, Ethan today? Yeah. Okay, we were talking yeah. about it in our morning meeting. Big robe guy. I'm not oh, gonna yeah. say who he is. But a big robe guy texted me this morning. Oh, and uh, he's he's overseas uh, in Korea uh, with testing the, out the PGA Korean tour event. No, well, I, I, he said to me, he's like, "Hey, man," because we were trying to connect, and the time change just didn't work. He's mm-hmm. like, uh, "We'll chat with you tomorrow." I'm like, "All right, have a good night, big robe guy." And it, it pisses him <laughs> off every time. Uh, all right, so that's enough on uh, Bird of Prey number ten. The main thing is great content on odysseygolf.com. Mm-hmm. Dinev's hosted a Callaway Talks with Sean. You want to hear good. that one uh, and listen to the Putter Podcast. All right, the other big news that out today. Two of my favorite people. Mine too. I mentioned one of them last week. We mentioned both of them last week. Yeah. Henrik Stenson and Annika are hosting one of the coolest golf events that could ever be hosted. I watched the like hype promotion video this morning on Twitter and I got so excited. The thought of having, what is it, 156 players yeah. at once, 78 men, 78, 78, 78 women. women. Um, same golf course. Same golf course, same prize, same everything. Like That is one so trophy. cool to rule them all. Yeah, well, no, just one. Uh, <laughs> so so I'll be honest, the the confusion, I thought this at first, it's like, oh, so they're going to have 78 men compete in the men's division, 78 women compete in the women's like division. The, no, 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 That's no, no, like no. the Vic, right? Yeah, that's been like other things. Yeah. But, but this is, this is you know, like like the USGA did back-to-back weeks at Pinehurst. Mm-hmm. Um, this would be like having the fields and having them play one, and there's only one champion. I know. it's ex- I think it's really exciting. Yeah. Um, definitely something that golf has been waiting for for a mm-hmm. long time, um, especially, I would say, on the women's side. I don't know how much it crossed the men's mind. But like this is going to be really cool, and having Henrik and Annika there to support yeah. it and host in it in Sweden, yeah, in Sweden, it's just going to be, it's going to be something else. So I have questions, and Annika and Mike are on a on an amazing vacation right now, so yes, I can't call and get answers. <laughs> um, 
Is Annika going to come out of retirement for it? Ooh, People want to know. Question. I'm thinking no, but Probably I'd not. love to see her do it. Um, Henrik obviously will be playing in this. It's the week before the U.S. Open. Oh, so I it's a great oh, yeah, tune-up for is, folks. Huh? Yeah, so it's after the Women's Open, prior to the to the U.S. Open and Wingfoot. Mm-hmm. So plenty of flights from Stockholm to New York. So so that yeah. that that makes it easy. Plus none of these guys are flying a forty two D anyway. No. <laughs> so so they're they're just fine. I just think this is amazing. Um, I want to give shout outs to Henrik mm-hmm. and Annika, their teams, uh, the LET and mm-hmm. the European Tour. Yeah. Because the progressiveness that they continue to show with all these different cool events, whether it's the sixes, um, whatever, you know, they were the first ones to allow shorts, walk up music. Yeah. They're the best. Yeah. It's definitely keeping golf um, in like a a younger, like just working with the times kind of vibe, which is something that the game gets well, kind of a bad rap for. Here's the thing. And this was my, my first thought. I probably wasn't going to watch the Stockholm Open next year. Probably not. If it was just a regular run of the mill yeah. week before the U.S. Open men's only event Mm -hmm. now i'm 100 percent watching the stockholm open yeah i can't wait it's a really yeah it's definitely a good way to get eyeballs out there for sure and hey olympics why aren't we doing this why are we having separate competitions good call i would love to see it go even further and eventually do we're like they have another event where it's teams of men and women playing together that would be so good can you imagine how well everybody would pair together well it's just i mean the olympics is the natural yeah and this has been beaten to death so we're not coming up with anything (laughs) new here but to have you know last time it would have been you know bubba watson ricky fowler michelle we the quarters like uh uh, it's just who doesn't want to watch that instead of like playing a week apart it would be so good especially if you could mic them up oh yeah content i just want to mic on henrik me too so well done super super excited uh for both of these things Mm -hmm. and look we will try to get annika uh on the girls and golf pod as soon as she's back from this extravagant amazing amazing you know they went from vacation to vacation i know she was telling me about it when we were in reno um can they were having like some those of you on the video you can see a monitor (laughs) that just went out now it's back they were having some um like just prepping themselves because you know they're going back to florida soon but they had like all these trips lined up and she was just like oh it's like man that sounds really nice those are problems (laughs) that we don't have lex that we don't have all right what we do have is lots of people joining this show yes we do next after this video starring and featuring our next guest you can uh we can we're gonna answer some of your questions yeah um for kevin napier our tour truck, senior tour truck, truck technician, Say that five slash times driver, fast. senior tour truck technician, senior tour truck technician, <laughs> senior tour truck technician, senior tour truck technician, senior tour truck technician. That was awesome. Good yeah, job. It's not hard. Uh, and then a little bit later in the show, we're going to have Jason Tardick of Bachelor Fame, Season Fortune, see, uh, Bachelorette Fame. It's all the same <laughs> to me, Lex. He's a financier. He's a big Buffalo guy. Big Buffalo guy. I don't know guy. if we're talking about Wild Wings, Wings, the city, the teams, yes. the meat. Yeah. All of the above. All of the above. And hopefully um, he's going to give me some advice. All right. And then I'm super excited. Thursday, you and Finley have another A15 episode. Yes, we do. The last one with David Hoylander was awesome. If you haven't listened to that, please, please, please download and listen to it and ask questions about that. ShipshowCallawayGolf.com. Call us 760-804-4653. But first, Kevin, why don't you tell us about what you did up in Napa? Morning, guys. Kevin Napier on the tour truck here. We're gonna build the Jaws MD5 wedge this morning for a player. We're cutting a 35 and an eight for a 35 and a quarter finish. The player's very particular on swing weights. We are just a little over D4. Let's check our loft and lie over here. Just go over here and glue this wedge real quick. Mix this up, a little in the hosel there, a little on the end of the shaft. Marry those up. Wipe our epoxy. There you have it. So guys, here we got a Jaws MD5 wedge finished and ready to go. So the first ones we got going are uh, Adam Hadwin. So he uses uh, a 52, a 56, and a 60. Uh, S grind, C grind, and C grind. So the S grind is uh, a pretty standard grind. It's kind of an all-around grind that you can work with fairway, rough, uh, anywhere you need to. The C grind is more of a lower bounce grind. Uh, it's easier to lay the club open get the leading edge underneath the ball a little more. So that's what he likes. Next build we got going for uh, Sang Moon Bay. Uh, he is uh, all S grinds. So he doesn't like to do a lot of opening of the club around the greens. He likes the bounce to do the work for him. Uh, so he doesn't need to add bounce when he opens the club. Uh, he's 52, 56, and a 60, like I said, all in an S grind. Uh, 
Last but not least, what we're working on this morning is uh, Akshay. Um, he is a uh, 54S. Excuse me, 50S, 54S, and a 60S. So he's similar to uh, Sang Moon Bang, where he uh, he does the S grind all the way through. But there's a little bit of custom work on uh, on Shays there. I think Anthony uh, Anthony inside did those. So thank you, Anthony. We appreciate that. Um, so that's what we got going this morning on uh, MD5, guys. Welcome back to Ship Show. Jeff Laxon has promised our good friend Kevin, everyone's favorite tour truck driver. I don't know if he's everyone's favorite. I think he's driver. everyone's What's favorite. What's going on, Kevin Napier? How are y'all? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for uh, having me. All right, so so we're just going to be honest on the Ship Show because we're always, we're taping this on Friday. You're yes. listening to this on Tuesday. You have just completed the final drive of the season, so I want some stats. Where did you just come from? So just came from Houston. Okay, when um, you were coming from Houston, did you notice a bunch of scared Astros fans? <laughs> there were a few. <laughs> notice I'm taping this on Friday. I'll do a second version. Boy, were the Astros fans gloating because they whipped my Yankees two games in a row? <laughs> there was a lot. Of course, it was the Houston uh, race. You know, the the uh, what are the the Astros? Yeah, kind of sponsor that event, I guess. Yeah, uh, you're right, right. Because Jim Crane, right, right, yeah, the owner right. of the Astros so is the one who's, who's. It was absolutely everywhere. Um, on property. Well, that's pretty cool. So. All right. So how, how many miles? Uh, from here to there, 1550. How long did it take you? Let's see. Six hours on Wednesday, 10 and a half yesterday, and about six and a half today. Holy crap. Yeah. 10 and a half? 10 and a half. Yeah. Is that Ooh. the max you're allowed 10, to drive in a day? Yeah. Yeah. Because so. th there's very... Most people don't know. Yes. There are very, very strict rules. Yeah. So uh, you can be on duty working 14 hours a day. You can drive... 11 hours a day with a 30 minute break somewhere in between that 11 hours so you can physically drive behind the wheel 10 and a half hours do you plan your like long drive day around the ones like you know you have a good rest stop no <laughs> i just kind of plan i do start planning the rest stop about 10 30 because you're usually filling up with gas and going to the rest stop that has a decent restaurant because none of them are good <laughs> at all so you know how, how much does it cost to fill the the tour truck up with gas Ooh, the old question. truck um i guess they're about the same so they both have 120 on each side so 240 240 gallons, gallons. <laughs> um and then 50 gallon tank in the in the trailer okay um so let's call it you know 300 300 290 because we with actually can do math lovely state of california it's you don't want to fill up in the state. Oh, I can't. I yeah, just filled so. up at Costco yesterday, so I. <laughs> Could you imagine like... doing three hundred gallons? No, yeah. I can't. Your corporate card must be blowing up. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't even want to know. Yeah, Is that your lot. first trip when you get in here? You go up to the finance people and just apologize. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'll have to go through this. <laughs> oh my god! I did notice in Concur you have your own line though. It says like tour truck gas. Yeah, because that one's just such a crazy thing. All right, Kevin Napier, <laughs> senior tour truck technician. I saw you in Napa. Yeah. Those of you watching the video yeah. version of the show, which I don't know why you're not on our YouTube, uh, you were there all week. That was the Jaws launcher there. I think that's Steph Curry who came in the truck. Yeah. Um, Super cool. What was what was that week? You know, let let's use that as a week in the life. And we're gonna get to all the the questions. We have mm -hmm. questions from Chuck, from Clay. From Shane Bot, which means Shane Wu, Dave H, Any Chance Alex, Shane H. Why is Any Chance and Alex Lex. and Lex has questions? Why is Any Chance Alex not outside right now with the tour truck? I'm really actually surprised that he didn't I show didn't up today. I didn't pop it out. It's not open yet, so yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised that Alex didn't like come to HQ today. Well, it's Friday. Know. Well, he did know because Chad tweeted it yesterday that he was going to be in here today. Yeah. I thought he just said that we were going to record a podcast with him, which gave it open, open ended. Uh, I guess so. I don't know. To protect Kevin, I thought we did that. <laughs> <laughs> People running after the truck. You think you You'd think Kevin surprised. has the same size mob as um, the Bachelor filming did in Cleveland? I think yes, it's more the truck and not me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you 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 and the truck are one. <laughs> Unless Woody's driving it. Uh, yeah. Well, Woody drove about ten times this year. It was awesome. It was nice to have him in there, and I could get some time home. So yeah. All awesome. right. So let's 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 go through. You want to go through some of these questions first before we get to our questions? Yeah. Let's do that. Because I'm scared that I'm going to ask a question that they have. Yeah. I let's do read the li yet. listeners first. All right. Chuck Hoffman would like to say, "Hey, Kevin." So, hey, from Chuck. Hey. <laughs> and would like to know how much golf he gets to play while on the road, if any. 
Also, how often do pros regrip their clubs? He hopes to see you in 2020. I like when they call them handles. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Shout out Adam Hadwin. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so as far as uh, regripping, I would say it's different. Some guys you don't see. Some guys you got to drag in there. Uh, on average, I would say maybe once every uh, eight to ten weeks. Eight wow. to ten weeks. Yeah. Um, some are sooner. Some are maybe maybe six. So it just depends how much they practice. Yeah. How it just it's sometimes they're you know finicky about stuff like that. But yeah, and it's about much, eight weeks. How much golf do you get to play while you're on the road? I don't really want to play golf when I get on the road. To be honest with you. <laughs> People I know that sounds that. bad. It's yeah. I'm around it 24 seven, and it it sounds bad. But I don't play golf unless it's a place that I want to play. Yeah. Well, or, or even if worse, it's like exactly. If this sounds so bad, like if it's not like a course that's a top 100 or something like that, yeah, it like, sounds bad. Eh. But it sounds bad. Yeah. It does. <laughs> but, uh, it does. Eh. All right, Lex, you want to take yeah. the next one? Yeah. All right. So this one's from Clay S. Did you work with Henrik on his new three wood? If so, how hard was it to get him something that he likes? And then he has a follow-up question. So I actually built the last one that he just cracked. Um, the last Diablo. The last Diablo <laughs> that he just cracked. R.I.P. Wentworth. Yeah. Yeah, R.I.P. <laughs> um, so that was in 2017, like early 17. So he's had that one for a little while, but he had the previous one for three years too. Um I didn't do much with this one because they built them at Wentworth, like right after it cracked. Got it. Um, so we we he already had everything dialed in, and and he came in to get some a couple loft lies done and, and a couple wedges done this week. But we didn't do much. Uh, we didn't do much three wood work. He can, was already dialed give, in. Can I give a Henrik shout out before you do the yeah. second half of the question? So we did a shoot with Henrik a couple weeks ago okay. down in in Florida. Okay. Henrik, I've known Henrik for a while. Before I worked at Callaway, he's always one of my favorite yeah. personalities. Yeah, he's awesome. He always messes with me, uh -huh. and I like to try to dish it back to him, and eventually he wins. That's kind of how our relationship sure. works. So he wore the coolest shirt that I've ever seen a golfer wear. You can check it out on the Jaws commercial, the one with Roger Cleveland, and it's on our YouTube page. This shirt is just awesome. And I probably mentioned it to him about 70 times because <laughs> a lot of times, you know, players will show up with like, like, a bunch of shirts. He's like, I have the best shirt. I'm only going to bring this one. This is the perfect one for TV. And it legitimately was. It was. So fast forward to two days ago, Wednesday. I know this is all screwed up because people are listening to this next week. Right. There's a package on my desk. I open it. There's a card in there that's a picture of Henrik. And it says, <laughs> Jeff, please do not hit bad shots wearing my shirt. H. And it was awesome. the shirt. That's now, so not cool. the one he actually wore because that was pretty sweaty. That, that would day. be weird. <laughs> but it's it's the because we're the same size. So you what have so you have the shirt that has like the splits in the back because this back. this shirt has like Eagle Ball shirt. This, yep. Yeah, okay. it has ventilation twice yeah. on your and back. I'm always hot, so for me to have a shirt with like ventilation like that, and and Henrik, you have to understand this <laughs> is Henrik is a month older than me. Okay. Um. We like the same shirts, and combined, we have uh, an open championship. So we have a lot in common. <laughs> wow. We have a lot in so common much together. In we common. both lived in Orlando. I mean, it's just the, the, the similarities are endless. So I've always bonded with this guy, but um, I know he doesn't listen to the ship show, and he makes it a point to tell me, but right. maybe he secretly does. <laughs> if he is listening, thank you, because that was really cool. And I can't wait to the next time we see him, okay. which for me will probably be at the players. I'm going to be sporting that shirt. I'll uh I don't know if he'll play Sea Island he he might but I'll uh, I'll mention something first. Yeah, I sent I sent Bjorn a note because I'm sure should. Bjorn had something to do with this because I told Bjorn when we came back how good because we messed with Bjorn right. You know Bjorn is hard to mess with. Yeah. So so Bjorn Bjorn will get mad at me but I'll say it anyway. Bjorn sent a text <laughs> while we were shooting. It was me, J Rod, and Ethan. He's like, "How's it going?" And I'm like, "Hey man, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but Henrik hates sharks." He's like really against the whole Jaws thing and like complete. <laughs> and I got the note back. I wrote it in such a convincing way that Bjorn wrote back to me. He goes, are you serious? Then Henrik took my phone and sent like a funny selfie as only Henrik can. And then Bjorn calmed down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interject in uh, your That's question, so Clay. That's so amazing. But, uh, Clay, do you want to go the second half? Yeah. All right. So how involved are the new guys with their equipment? So Akshay, Maverick, and all of those guys. And then what's it like to work with them? He's he's asked this question multiple times, so Clay, I'm sorry that we didn't ask you well, before. This is the first time Kevin's here. Yeah. I know. Uh, so the younger guys or the newer guys, uh, they are ten times more involved with their equipment than than some of the guys coming out when I even I first started. 
um, with Callaway four years ago. So they they have a sense of art, and they already know what they might need and what looks good to their eye and what feels good to them. So they are so much uh, more educated nowadays, and you know, with with the way fitting has has you know been a part of um, of tour, they they know what they want before they almost they get out there you know they they're very they're very easy to fit actually because they've been dialed in for a while and even a transition like akshay had from another company um he struggles with a couple clubs like maybe a hybrid or utility and and that's maybe course specific but um other than that woods irons wedges putter Putter will take a little while. It's such a personal club, but well, plus he's such a damn good putter. Right, he's really good putter. He's good with anything, good anything. But um, Mav, uh, we've we've seen Mav off and on a little bit. Um, he had some starts when he came out, I think, two years ago. Um, but he he's he's, I call him kids. I shouldn't say kids, but they They're are Oxshade's kids. Oxshade's kids. They are. He's They're definitely so kids. It's it's crazy how good they are and and how good of ball strikers they are and and they they know exactly what they want or need but before you even get to them a lot of times are they enthusiastic about equipment because i you know like listening to akshay talk about like how technical and how knowledgeable he is about what he's actually playing with was really crazy to me at such a young age yeah they get excited about stuff um especially you know signing uh, a deal with callaway and and getting fit over at ecpc uh they I wouldn't say they love the attention, but they they love to see results. Mm-hmm. They they love to you know see that that epic flash is faster. They love to see that uh, you know the new jaws MD5 is is such a good wedge, and he had such a smooth transition into fitting those. Didn't have to do any grinding or any anything like that. So uh, yeah, they they do get excited with with new stuff. Yeah. All right, next question we have here is from Ethan, who I believe is in the office over there. He wants to know, <laughs> why did Jeff not tell you to wear a Callaway hat when you did the videos in the Napa Tour truck? And when you're on the podcast, will you please wear a Callaway hat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the Callaway hat on today. Right, good uh, job. I mean, I was sporting the Odyssey hat. You when, were. Uh, when, uh, and we did that very Steph last second. That yeah, was very and that was rough. Well, you had the Odyssey like... hat that day. I'm saying the day one when we first walked in there, there was no hat on. Oh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that was Monday. Know. I don't know. And plus, it was 103 degrees. Yeah, it might have been a little hot in the truck, too. A little so. hot. Yeah, the it truck was... can only, uh, only kind of take 20, 25 degrees difference in, in what it is. So oh, it was 103, man. 103, so it was track 25. Yeah, it was, I got it. It was, it it was, was hot. hot. With right. six, seven people in there, yeah. Yeah. Shane Bot, Shane Wu. Does he have any other nicknames? No, I think they think just the two. Okay. What's the closest call you've ever had to not making it to a tournament venue on time and what happened? Um uh, I've never really had any close calls. We had the hydro when the remember the hydraulic leak at one point, that was an issue. Yeah, I've but that, never I think that. that was after the tournament. It was after, but you still have to get to another one. Yeah. Uh, but I mean it was fixed in yeah, maybe a couple hours. So. so no, like no, no close calls to like no, not making a tournament. No, no, not many close calls. I mean, the well, sooner you know, you're there. Like skydiving instructors all say they have at least like one near death experience, right. right, with somebody. So I feel like you would assume that the same right. would go for I a mean, tour truck driver. I've never knock on wood. I've always had stuff bad happen after tournaments. Yeah. So like this year, the alternator went out on the old truck, but yep. it was right after Palm Springs. Yep. Um, so I remember that and the hydraulic leak that was after the tournament yep. and then I had battery issues after New York so Oof. thank goodness I've never been late to a tournament but you know maybe late leaving so but sometimes you have to you know crawl underneath a truck and get dirty right you wear a lot of hats so totally. you're like mm-hmm. well I'm gonna get to that know. later because I have Oof. a question about that alright Shane right. sorry we, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll try to do better next time alright Lex alright Dave H says what are the top three truck stops in the US and why hmm man that's a good question uh I don't know if I really have favorite ones I go to Love's a lot just cause where's that uh, well, that's that's just a chain, oh, okay. like a yeah. flying. But there's not J. one in particular. No, no, big loves guy. <laughs> uh, got my rewards card somewhere right here. Nice. Uh, <laughs> don't have to shower there, thank God. Um, 
But there's, uh, I think on I-80 in Iowa somewhere, maybe Illinois, like right, I think they're yeah. next door to each other, there's uh, the world's biggest truck stop. Uh-huh. Oh, cool. Oh, it is absolutely huh. massive. We should ask Penny it's to come on the a, and talk about it. We totally should. It's basically should. A, uh, a, a, like a small, like they have, have you ever been to Bucky's in Texas? No. No? no? It's like they have everything. It's like a, it's like a mall. I mean, uh-huh. they have just little shops and everything, so that one's kind of cool, but um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any chance, Alex, who shockingly is not here, <laughs> what shows do you binge watch when you get time to yourself? And any chance you can binge watch, binge watch them with you? <laughs> uh, I had the last part myself. I'm not a big TV guy in the well, room. Yeah, because you're tired. Like, yeah. I never I turn the TV on in my you room. You know what? Um, yeah, my boss is like, how do you not turn the TV on when you get off work? I'm, I'm like, the same way. Because I don't want to watch TV. Yes. I just want to be silent and not yeah. do anything. But um, I like to watch. I mean, I, I, my wife and I watch a lot of TV when I'm home. But I don't really binge watch much. I'll watch movies every once in a while right. you know, in the room. But I'm not a big TV well, what guy do you, in the right, room. Let's, let's modify the question. What are, you, what are you listening to when you're driving 10 and a half? <laughs> so... I recently got XM in the truck. Nice. So that's been awesome. Good job, Ethan. Yeah, thank you, Ethan. Um, so what channels are you going to? A lot of Dave. There's a Dave channel on I know, now. Channel 30, so Dave 30. Matthews Band. Uh, listen to that. Listen to a lot of Stern. Uh-huh. Passes the time pretty good. Um, man, there's so many channels I listen to. I listen to a few of the country channels. The Willie Nelson channel is awesome. Okay. But yeah. That's a good one. I'm not too. a country guy. I'm big uh, on uh, Kenny Chesney's channel, the yeah. No Shoes Nation yeah, channel. That's a really good. One. They mix in some Dave Matthews and nice. stuff. You, you might any, like uh, that. Do you know Yacht Rock Radio? Oh, Yacht Rock is good. I like Yacht Rock. What's Yacht Rock? 310. What, what's channel up? 310. What it's uh, it's uh, like music from it's my, anything that has Michael McDonald. Christopher Cross. <laughs> oh, okay. The, occasion, the yeah, occasional yeah, yeah. Jimmy okay, Buffett. I'll check that one yeah. out. He has his own station. Yes, he does. Channel 310 for that. I've been listening to Hall of Fame Radio. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame radio because it's such a good that. variety of artists and they do a lot of live performances. Okay. Which is pretty good. But yeah, I, I, the XM is awesome. Nice. That's and of course, you listen to the Ship Show. Absolutely. Yeah. Do a and few podcasts. Yeah, do a few <laughs> podcasts. Do all of our podcasts. Yeah. Uh, where has your podcast been? It's coming back yeah. soon, I promise. Okay. Girls and Golf you, you, Exactly. You've had a couple events to go to and, and I'm like, yeah, they're coming. I check no, we're coming. Every time I'm like, uh, I, I actually, as soon yet. as we're done with this podcast, uh-huh. I'm going to my office to listen to one that she wants me to listen to. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That's my yeah. next thing. And we're, there you go. Yep. It's going to be good. All right. Last listener question right. from Shane H. What is in the snack drawer on the truck? Great. What question. isn't? Yeah. Good, good question. <laughs> you guys have really upped your snack game over the last like year or so, I got to say, from when, because I, when I stopped in the truck this year in uh, Memphis, I was pretty impressed by the health level. Yeah. Well, that was because Simon shopped that week. That was not me. <laughs> yeah, so you'll know who shops that week according to what the food is. But if it's healthy, Simon shopped. Right. If it's not healthy, I shopped. I like it. So, What's in there? Um, tons of, there's a bunch of sugar, like yeah. gummies, Swedish fish, um, cookie, anything. Anything that's bad for you is in there when I'm, when I'm in there. Okay. There's like popcorn. Um, funny story, Simon shopped that week. Uh-huh. And actually, you know, Simon being British, uh, he bought White Claws. Oh, my God. In the cooler and had no clue uh, that that's there was amazing. alcohol in them. Oh, and, that's uh, awesome. Why wasn't I like, that week? Right? He's like, oh, they're seltzer. They're flavored. They'll be great. I could have totally these. used one and, that day, too. <laughs> that's hysterical. And, and, did, did a player uh, open it? No. It I, I don't know who who did it, but they're, they're like, oh, White Claws. And they're like, yeah. So I, so I was like, yeah, I got those for the truck. I'm like, yeah, they have 5% alcohol. That's amazing. <laughs> so. Maybe uh, maybe That's not until after the day, but that was a that was a good one. The, the, the Yeti cooler is 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 key. In it's that pretty truck. sweet. Yeah. It is it is a redneck Yeti cooler. Yeah, it is Rhino lined and it has yep. a bench seat on top of it. It's pretty. What nice. is Rhino lined? So it's like a bed liner, yeah. like in your truck. Yeah, but it's just a spray on bed liner. Oh. It makes it more durable. Yeah, okay. it makes it more durable. I kept all my food in there during the week at Napa, and it's like 103 degrees. And nice. my food was chilly. perfectly, oh, perfectly yeah. chill. I mean, I've seen the cooler. I just yeah. didn't know all the nice. technical terms yeah. that came with it. Yeah, yeah. this the, the people don't appreciate enough all the you know h- how many hours a year you spend on that truck. Yeah, it's home away from home. Yeah, so so you guys have made it ten hours a day. You guys have made it so you know comfortable, yeah. and and it's it's like everyone knows their spot because mm-hmm. there's not a ton of room, right. but everyone kind of has their spot. You yeah. have the best spot. You do have the best I spot. Think. 
Well, my spot, I can kind of see in the window who's coming in, so it's yep. nice. So if it's somebody that needs me, then... Well, plus you have a window. Right. Which Usually is... I try to park in a spot where yeah, your you, know, you get a open. decent view. Yeah. Uh, like Tory's a good one. You get there first, you can have a nice view of the golf course and totally. the ocean. But... Totally. So here's here's my biggest question. Every right. time I'm out at a tour event, and I'm not out as much as I, sh- I should be, but right. I'm going I'm to commit and go to more. Um, you build from sunup to sundown. Hmm? I've never seen you on the range actually watching these guys hit mm-hmm. or or talking with them about what they're hitting on the range. I see you talk about mm-hmm. them in, in the truck all the time. Is that frustrating? Like never just to get outside and like watch them hit what you've like, I built this thing. I want to see what they do. Yeah. Um, I try to, it's just hard to do. Yeah. Um, I was out on the range for maybe 10 minutes all of three days, you know, in Houston, but just if we don't have a body to take a player, or a club or you right. know, Johnny and Soroka or, you know, somebody's working on something i'll take the you know club to the player but if it's rarely slow so i don't get out yeah. much but it, it, was, it yeah it was pretty funny like up to. at napa so on day two of the napa launch um we had these cool jaw shirts made mm-hmm. and we all wore them with the exception of sean sean didn't wear them. what i don't know why sean didn't wear them. i know he why he didn't get a shirt i know why yeah there were shirts left over i don't want oh good Let's get one for Sean. Let's make him wear it. Um, so, so I don't know if it was either Maverick who walked in, or I think it was Maverick who walked in. Yeah. And I happen to be sitting on the on the cooler, uh-huh. and Kevin's back is building, and Woody's up there building, and there's no one else. And he kind of looks, and I'm like, "Can I help you?" And he does like a complete double take. <laughs> I'm like, "I'll build something. I'm, I'm next up." And he's like, "I'll I'll just wait." I'll wait for these guys. <laughs> but what what's it like when you you know certain guys like you've been on the truck four years, right? Who's I'm trying to think like a guy like a Hadwin or a Furyk or yeah. guys who've been with us that that whole time. Yeah. What's the it's almost like you guys don't even have to talk. Like you guys know it's no. like nonverbal communication. Um, and like with Hadwin, I know what he needs already because every two or three weeks he's in there for a loft and lie. Right. And I'll you know as soon as he walks the door, I'll yeah, it's time. It's been two or three weeks, or or it just depends on the player, but uh, you usually know what they need by the time you know timing wise when they come in there. So. Um, you start developing a relationship with these guys and, and um, it's cool to see them kind of behind closed doors. A oh, lot. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My, t- my turn for my question, which I'm really excited about. Right. So you have a really cute dog, <laughs> Birdie. Hmm. Is her name? B-I-R-D-E-E. I-E. 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 Yeah. I don't know why. I, said, I wanted to say E-E. Maybe just to be different. Um, has she ridden in the truck? Uh, great question. Birdie has ridden in the truck. Um, Birdie, well, tell us what type of dog she is. So she is a Vishla. She's two years old. Um, She's met lots of famous lots golfers. Lots of famous golfers. You can see it on her Instagram. Um, so she, my wife, uh, came to Chicago with me. So Simon drove the truck. Um, we rode up to Chicago. Birdie was with us. Uh, did the tours thing in Chicago. And... Uh, my wife just kind of hung out Monday. She came out Tuesday, uh, kind of walked around Medina uh, with my wife. And then Wednesday when we were packing up, uh, I was driving to Nashville. So mm-hmm. rental car went back and well, <laughs> piled in the old, old truck. Family in How the was truck. That? It was awesome. Birdie didn't like it too much. Really? She, uh, it, which was, she was kind of scared. You know, there's that thing moves and, and hitting a bump in that truck yeah. is not like hitting a bump in the car. Like yeah. sometimes you will come off the seat. Oh, um, so she, uh, she kind of did the shake thing until she oh, no. shook herself to sleep. But, uh, when we started pulling into Nashville and she figured out where she was, she was kind of excited. But, uh, <laughs> it, it took my wife getting in the back. So there's a sleeper in the back. There's actually a bunk bed in the new one. Nice. So there's two beds. That's awesome. But, um, uh, my wife got in the back and just laid down and tried to oh, <laughs> calm her a little bit. But, uh, yeah, she uh, she struggled with that. All right, Kevin, I think, is getting a picture how, of this. How, we'll, do you think we'll M- with the how do you think yeah. MTC would do in the truck? Uh, well, Miles the, Miles the cat hates driving in a car. So we drive him less See, than one mile to Paige's parents' house. And he goes on, whoever's the driver, he goes on their lap and he shakes the entire time until the mile ends. Then you open the door and he just jumps out and walks in the house. Um, now, when, when Paige moved here from, from Napa, she drove from Napa down to, to, to Del Mar, mm-hmm. and the cat literally shaked on her lap the entire Aww. night. So, Miles is not, is not much for cars. Uh, Miles hates this time of year because we're about to get close to where we lose daylight savings time. Oh, yeah. And his favorite thing is to sit outside, 
and I don't let him sit outside at night because he would turn into coyote bait. It's true. We live pretty close to the canyon. So last night, for instance, he just was staring at the, the, the darkness outside, meowing at me, like, let me out, let me out. I'm like, I'm not letting you out. It's dark. Yeah. You know the rules. <laughs> Birdie had a few coyotes visit her the other day. Uh-oh. How'd oh, she no. do? She did okay. It was 1130 in the middle of the day, too, so. That's what scares me. Yeah. Coyotes I don't are think nasty. She would do they anything, are not afraid. But I don't I don't know if the coyotes they would mess with her obviously, but there's a pretty big fence, yeah. but she would just you know, do you want to be my friend? Right. So, <laughs> she seems like yeah, a nice dog. She she is. Well, one, one of my goals next year is I'm gonna try to make it happen around the Desert Classic. The Amex. Sorry, uh-huh. don't want to say Desert Classic. Uh, I definitely want to get in the truck with you and, and do the drive from here to there, from there back yeah, to here. Come on. That'd be so much fun. Do yeah. I don't even want to do it for content. I just want to do it. I would do it for it's content. Fun. You, you know, got to help pack say up, that though. I've been a part of it. Amanda's done it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the No Laying Up guys did it. If you haven't yeah, watched that video fun. with with Kevin, go to No Laying Up's YouTube fun. page and find find Kevin Napier's video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did Trevor say something to us, by the way? Yeah, I think it's time to wrap. All right. We'll just wrap, Trevor. <laughs> Don't worry. Kevin just drove like 20 hours to get here. But apparently you got something you got to do. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. Okay. oh. We got six more minutes. <laughs> they can wait. AJ can definitely wait. Um, uh, any last things you want to talk about before you you got you, you're so so the tour truck will be here at HQ. It's gonna be here for a while till uh, the desert. Till the desert. So okay. I'll, uh, oh dang. I've got so some meetings in three weeks, but yeah. That's yeah. So I have a have. big present for you in the tour truck that right when we get off the air we got to talk about because we got to call someone because we're gonna do something really cool to it. Okay. Um, that I think is gonna make you guys happier. Love that's it. all I want to do is make you guys happier. It's Love just it. improving life quality over yeah. here. Yeah. We, we have an idea. Okay. This came off of I'm our Napa ours. trip okay. that we think can help. All, All right. right. Well, we're going to wrap this up because <laughs> but, apparently we have a, a, a fitting room podcast. Out. Yeah, but we also have a whole other segment of this show. You're right. And joining us on that other segment is everyone's favorite <laughs> character from The Bachelor, Jason Bet. Tartik. Bachelorette. Bachelorette. Well, Jason he could have been on The Bachelor. Tartik. Jason Tartik. He was in the running to be The Bachelor, actually, and then he got with Caitlin, and, and, oh. then, and then it was Colton. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to talk with Jason. Jason spent the day in three days from now or yesterday, <laughs> depending which which day you're you're living in right now. I'm still living in Friday. He did a fitting at the Ely Callaway Performance Center. Correct. We're going to talk to him about what clubs ends up in his bag. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk to him about life with Caitlin. Caitlin has been on this podcast before. Yep. She's also going to be on an upcoming episode of the Girls and Golf podcast. Yes, she is. And I'm going to ask Jason all of my money questions. All right. Well, I don't know what's going to happen in between that segment, this segment with Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks and, for having and me. And the next segment. Maybe we'll play. You know what? Let's play a clip of the Fitting Room podcast that's kicking us out right now. <laughs> they, they can fill the break, so we don't have to. All right. Thanks. This is the Fitting Room podcast with your hosts, Nate Adelman and AJ Volpel. So you guys didn't know this. I'm breaking the news right to you right now. That will give you, one, alignment, but two, the high level of MOI that we're talking about. And I'm referring to the 10 and the bird of prey. All right. Welcome back to the the three-day ship show. (laughs) It's It's been like three days to record one podcast. I know. It's nuts. It's going to be a good podcast. It's going to be. If nothing else, it's going to be long. (laughs) Exactly. It's going to be long. (laughs) Bear with us. Yeah. So why don't you introduce our next guest? Okay. So he was on season 14 of The Bachelorette. He's a big finance guy, a big Buffalo guy, and he recently played in a senior PGA event and hosted... One of the Tiger Woods Foundation events in LA, Jason Tardick. Hey. Welcome. Welcome to the ship show. Do you know why we call it's it the ship show? Here. No. Because they won't let us call it the shit show. I was thinking that's what it was. Yeah. I actually Googled that to make sure. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the only reason. All right. Well, thanks for coming and joining us. Yeah. Um, the reason that you're here mm-hmm. is because you went with uh, some of your family yes. and one of the coolest Goldens I've ever seen mm-hmm. to uh, the Ely Calloway Performance Center. Well, the dog didn't go. Mm-hmm. I don't know why the dog didn't go. dog could have yeah. definitely yeah. gone. Yeah. And you got fit in some new Callaway gear. We so can we start and talk gear. about that? Yeah, it was amazing. So Caitlin and I were trying to come up with Father's Day gifts, and it's our parents are. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's it's October. It's Father's October. Day was in June. <laughs> but hey, listen, we're we're trying to combine. Are you going as early? Or you going late? We, we're going late. Oh, but we man. put so our dad's birthday are in the same week. So we put Father's Day, 
birthday. We might put Christmas in there, maybe Hanukkah. <laughs> we're packaging it up. And, and you're going to do it three them. months late. We're going to do it three <laughs> months late. And they just got the best gift of their lives. So we just uh, did a full fitting. Right. Um, we tested out all the new Callaway irons, which are just incredible. And the professionals there were just remarkable. Yeah, so so, it was so you guys worked with Garrett and, and John Deegan. And we yep. saw your specs. So now we know a lot more about your golf game than you probably want us to know. Oh, boy. But, yeah. but <laughs> due to the fact, and this is like literally, this is not not coincidental. No. Today's the day, as we told you two segments or two days ago, <laughs> that today Bird of Prey comes out, mm -hmm. uh, along with the number 10. And you found the Bird of Prey as the putter that you could have picked any putter you wanted. Any putter. Why did you choose the Bird of Prey? And that showroom, let me tell you, there are options. But for me, I'm not a great putter. So I was putting with different options. The no, blades, you weren't a great putter. I weren't. Now I am. Good yeah. correction. Great correction. <laughs> but I felt like this mallet putter, it just like swung for me. It eliminated almost all my error, and it reminded me of like a pendulum. This thing was literally doing the work for me, and if I get a club to do the work for me, I'm in good shape. How often do you oh play? Uh, probably like one or two times a week. Nice. Yeah, but the mo what I really care about is when I play against my dad. My dad and I, you know, WWF, like the championship belts, <laughs> we have about 15 of them at home. Oh, my and gosh. And like, every time we put a bet on the line and we play for a belt. What's the most you guys ever played for? Uh, eh, are they like you know, prideful bets or are they money bets? It's, well, we play for both pride and money, but we don't we don't get over the top with All it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I um I heard something the other day like one of the most interesting things to do when you lose a bet is have to retake the SATs. I cannot imagine. Really? Yes, people bet that. People are bet you, that you, in fantasy that? leagues. How would you do that? How you, would you even take the you, SAT? You sign up and you pay for the test, oh and you go and you take the SAT with like a bunch of sixteen-year-olds. That is brutal. That's like a four-hour test. Huh. I know. I kind of want to bet someone that now. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, you know. You know. I'm going to bet Joe House that. Oh, you I would totally have lost, should I would have bet lost House this that. weekend. I would have lost this weekend because House and I, so we're going to get to Buffalo in a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. But but House and I had a huge um, non-wager on, on the tank for Tua Bowl. Okay. Because he's a huge <laughs> Redskins fan. I Death, or he won't call him Redskins. calls him Deadskins. Okay. And me and my, my Dolphins, and, and we lost. So That's I would I would have had to have taken the SAT had we made this bet. That you well at least Harper could have kind of helped you with That's that. That's true. Now That's th true. that would have been a good. So I'm going head to head this week with Chris Harrison, and the reason we even got connected with you guys mm -hmm. through yeah. Chris Harrison. And a quick cor uh, correction on that intro: we didn't we didn't host the Tiger okay. event. We were actually Chris Harrison's caddy. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was one he of needed the celebrities. Two oh yeah, we yeah we were chirping in his ear. We were <laughs> there. We were giving him some advice. Um, so we're here as a result of Chris. But I'm right now. I'm ten points behind Chris. He has one running back playing tonight. Oh no! Oh, so I think man. the loser of that should have to go have take, take the SAT. That would be well, so would good. This, here's the beauty of this: yeah, yeah. this doesn't come out till tomorrow. Okay. So if you give us another line saying like, "Well, the winner <laughs> will probably have to go take the SATs," we could just edit whatever gotcha. way it is so you win. Well, I well I, can I say yeah. Huh? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, I kick, shit show. I, I, <laughs> I kick Chris Harrison's ass, so I think as a result, he should have to take the SATs. Love it. There you go. Chris Harrison just kicked my ass in fantasy yesterday, so as a result, I think I'll have to take the SATs. Love it. <laughs> so Love it. All right. Good. Well, we might just leave both of those in. That's a really yeah. great bet, Lex. All right. Um, so do you ever play golf with Chris? You know what? I haven't, but he's, really? a, he's a hell of a golfer. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's they even put it in the Paradise intro. Yeah, that's what it's saying. I know. Yeah, why, yeah. Why, why haven't you done that? I don't know. We need to do well, that. Well, you guys are Nashville, we're based, in right? Nashville, Nash Vegas, yeah. as people call we're it. We're in Nashville. And let me, it, it, downtown is Nash Vegas these yeah. days. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But Chris is about, I think, 7, 8 handicap. We're, yeah. He's out in L.A. We're, well, we're it depends on the time of year, because when it gets close to Pebble, Chris's handicap has to rise a little bit so he can make the cut. <laughs> and he made it this year. He, uh, he didn't make it this year. He made it the year before. Yeah. And played in the last group with Jason Day okay, and okay. Snedeker. This year he played with Juan de Jesus de Rodriguez. I, I think right? that is correct. And uh, they did not make the cut. No. But it was I, quite I did sad. see on his Instagram he got invited back. That's he, right. did. Yeah. He, he did. He did get yeah. invited back, which is a yeah. big deal. Yeah. It's, um, but the, stay irrelevant, baby. <laughs> Chris is... <laughs> Chris has probably the best Pebble Beach. I'm not going to give away the secrets because yeah. he'll get really mad at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has the best Pebble Beach week of anybody. Really? He has the best lodging arrangement. Okay. He has the best social schedule. He's the man. He's, he's that done guy very, has very just well. crushed life. Yeah, I'm, I'm, crushed I'm life. hoping to, to come back as him in my next <laughs> life. <laughs> you and I both. Yeah, and I tell, and my I, son, I tell my son every day, I have a 14-year-old, yep. and I'm like, Landon, this is the only person you need to study. Don't study any of this crap <laughs> at school they're crap. telling you about. <laughs> no. This is what matters. <laughs> Break that blueprint, Landon. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, let's get to some other things. Let's do it. Um, 
let's go through the rest of your bag. So you ended up with yeah. with uh, Apex and 19 irons. Apex yeah. Pro irons. Apex Pro irons. Pro so you definitely irons, a stick. Yes. Talk to me yeah. about the Apex Pros. So they're, it's a beautiful, beautiful club, just mm-hmm. aesthetically. It's gorgeous. And it, it what I like about the club is that there's no room for error. And when you do have error, it pretty much tells you exactly what you did wrong. So it's like you have a progress report on this club every time you swing it. Right, because when you miss hit it, you completely screw it up. So I think it's going to force my swing to honestly get better. Because anytime you miss the miss the shot, you know exactly you hit it off the toe, you came right. down on it too much, et cetera, et cetera. So, I'm but there's fan. still there's still so much technology packed in those. Yeah. For it's the most technology yeah. you've ever seen a pro iron. Uh, so when you hit it good, it's just going to go. And if you hit it just south of good, it's still going to go. It's still going to go. Exactly. Yeah. If you really miss it, then you really then miss it. Screwed. Like you said, you get the feedback. Exactly. And it puts either the spin on the ball, like the spin trajectory, everything right. was amazing. And the analytics behind this, mm-hmm. this swing coaching and skill yeah. set is just incredible. I mean, it's incredible. Well, it's no different than the analytics days. behind The Bachelorette when they're trying to pick people. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same type of thing. So what do you think those Drafting. analytics look like? I, you know what? I, I probably know more than I should, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna go, because I like Chris Harrison. Oh, but I think okay. I think what's interesting about, about the show, so this is how I watch the show. Sure. So on Monday nights in my house, I sit, and we don't have a big house, okay. I sit in, in, in our bedroom, and I'm either reading or watching something, and normally the 17, almost 18 year old cat is with me. (laughs) And then Paige and Harper are in the the main, in the TV room watching, and judging by how loud the reactions they give to the show, that's how I know how much surprise it was. If it was the most shocking episode ever, the most surprising, the louder their volume is, the more I the the more I know that they've had like some crazy. And then you have to come in here (laughs) and listen to me talk about it more but usually i give a one minute recap to ish. my best one, one minute ish yeah, i've that, been Lex known does that every show oh, i've been know known that. for yeah. like my 90 second recap yeah okay but can, i have can done you one give minute. me a one minute recap and if i'm going too far off no 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 no, of, of no one's listening at this point anyway. of bachelor in, this whole season yeah, this of whole bachelor season, in paradise oh no way she could do that i just want i'm putting her to the test okay okay hold on i'll make a deal with you i'll make a deal with you if she can do this one minute ish recap you have to take the SATs. <laughs> no. No, instead of the SATs, <laughs> I was thinking about it. Inse- yeah, maybe. Instead of the SATs, how about how about you and Caitlin record? Because like Chris has done a very nice intro for her. Okay. For a one minute ish, how about we get another couple intros oh, yeah. so we can vary it up? Oh, I would love to do an intro. That would be fun. Okay. Would be right. I love an intro. See, I got you something, Lex. That, don't say you never did anything <laughs> yeah. for me. That's about all I've done. All right. Okay. Anybody got a timer? Uh, Trevor does. Trevor Mingliarino. All right, there's Trevor right there. Oh, you oh, missed him. No, I missed him. All right, Trevor, count should I, in. Should I count my Three, own self? Oh. Two, one, and go. So we had a lot of people on the beach, including Tasha, JPJ, and Demi, and Derek, and all these other people. And Demi and Derek dated for like a little bit. Tasha and JPJ actually ended up together. So did Demi and another woman who we found out about like halfway through the season. Wells was like barely seen, which is a huge disappointment <laughs> to everybody that was watching the show. Um, we had a lot of people actually come in and out, including one of the twins from Ben Higgins season. And uh, Dylan and Hannah are like the cutest thing ever. And thank you, Dylan, for bringing Hannah to San Diego. And my last couple I'm actually blanking on my last people but we saw Mike Johnson and he was a lot more boring than we thought he was going to be and um, there was a fight with two models and uh and I'm out that was incredible yeah. that's what you get every week on the ship show oh my yeah God. and it's even better when she's listened the night before and like yeah. has her notes and everything that was just yeah. freelance that's a pure professional thank yeah. you Thank you, you hit everything, by the way. I yeah. tried. I tried. I might have missed one thing in there. You summarized. You didn't lot mention Chris enough, it. but Chris doesn't get enough airtime. Chris time is like that barely on. Chris, Chris on goes that. to yeah. Paradise, and I'm pretty sure he plays golf. I know he, he plays golf. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. I'm what pretty he does. sure that's yeah. what he does in Mexico. Yeah. I also noticed that the one thing about Mexico is there's no cell service where, yeah. where they go for the show, <laughs> oh, yeah. which I'm totally like. I pretty much I I picture Chris calling everyone in a room. Go. Here's the deal. Yep. Everyone says there's no cell service. I'll be at the golf course. I'll be at the golf yeah. course. And everyone's all in on it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get to some other things. Uh, mm-hmm. Life advice. Life advice. So yeah. Q, talk to me about Q&As on your Instagram these days. Yeah. What you and Caitlin are doing. Yeah, Q&A. So I, I typically do it by myself. But in general, okay. I have nine years of corporate banking advice and anything and, and people that are in the like pursuit of health, wealth, and happiness. I try and give them any type of insight as they're going through their life and navigating through their 20s. Really? So, we got to talk. Oh, 20? So well. 20, well, 20, 30, <laughs> Damn it. 40s, 20 years ago. Goes, <laughs> the list goes on. But there's so many people out there that just don't know. It's okay not to know, but it's not okay to do anything about it. Well, so. as, as a 20-something-year-old, I feel like there's just like a lot of pressure 
pressure put yeah. on us, sure. if, whether like in college or from family. And like I'm an only child and my parents are wonderful. But even so, like there's this desire to do well sure. in their eyes. Sure. And so um, like reading the questions that you get are something that like myself and then a lot of my friends can identify with because Amazing. It's kind of a scary world out there for young 20. Kind of a scary it world. Is. It's pretty scary. It's, it's really less scary, scary out here in San Diego, but the rest of the world is really scary. It's, it's, it's yeah. scary, right? And the thing is, is like there's this blueprint, this model that we're told that we have to live our lives mm -hmm. to. And we try to adhere to that. And I was one who did it. I got my MBA. I moved for job opportunities. But I found myself, when I put my suit on, my identity was great. When I went to work, I felt good. I liked to see the paycheck every two weeks. When I came home, I was like depressed, lost, and had no idea idea what I was doing with my life yeah. and so for me it's all about life detours having the ability to restart and put yourself on the path that you're looking to pursue as opposed to what others want you them to pursue for you right you write so, a book. gotta create yeah. your own destiny that that literally could be the most pointing thing ever said on the ship <laughs> yeah. I mean the, the bar was it's, pretty low it's definitely the most mature <laughs> yeah. thing ever yeah, said well, on the ship show yeah ship wow show. Uh, man go. I almost don't even know where to go should we talk buffalo let's, let's talk, talk buffalo, buffalo all right let's 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 go there let's go there I can go in any direction here. All right. You want me to just well, kick it off, or you got? Why don't you? Why don't you kick it off? We have we have some topics and stuff. Yeah. So I so I was born and raised in, in Buffalo, New York, and I, well, I'll tell you about Buffalo. Where, where in Buffalo? Exactly. So Williamsville, East Amherst area. Okay. Um, and the thing about Buffalo is that in the '60s we were a booming city. Our economy well, was high. You don't remember the '60s? We, <laughs> no, but I know I studied the history. We were the right. Queen City to New York. That's how good it was. And then we things plummeted. And when things plummeted, um, we really had to get prideful because companies were leaving. There wasn't much to live for. And now what has happened is if you're from Buffalo, New York, you carry that pride anywhere you go. And there's not much that we do. I mean, there is more, a lot that we do. But we are known for our chicken wings, yep. our tailgating, mm -hmm. yep. our hockey. <laughs> All right, so the list might end there. So but we do it damn well. So, so, so you, can't, you can't read this because you're sitting a couple feet away from me. Here's my notes I made on Buffalo. Okay. okay. Yesterday I did make wings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually have been to the Anchor Bar yeah. before it closed. Oh. The Anchor Bar closed down, right? So no, the original still open. The original still original open. Still I've been open. to the original. Okay. I've done a full overnight tailgate including goulash at Rich Stadium. Oh, wow. In December. Have you really? Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I went to college in Syracuse. Oh, so get we drove out of here. Over. Yeah. Did you go to SU? I did. Amazing. I did. So one of my... One of my um, Floor mates, uh, shout out Brad Kubiak, who we haven't talked in 20 years. Hi, Brad. Um, <laughs> he is from Lancaster. Get out of here. So what, I thought this was the coolest thing, because I grew up in South Miami. Sure. So weather a little bit different than Buffalo. Oh, yeah. So okay. he said to me, he's like, hey, we're going to a December Raiders game okay. at Rich Stadium. He goes, we're going to drive over Friday after, <laughs> after classes to my parents. But what he didn't tell me was his parents and uncle, other relatives, they had the whole street. Yep. Like, that's something I've read about because, again, <laughs> it, I grew up in South Miami yep. and it just didn't resonate to me. And then they had a huge RV. Huge. And this was the family RV. Yep. And the only purpose of this RV, like, do you guys, like, go on trips? Like, no, no, we take it to Rich Stadium and back. That's, <laughs> that's it. it. That's all they do. It. The mile just So long. we got up Saturday, <laughs> drove to Rich Stadium. They let you in. Yep. And you just basically eat goulash and drank until Sunday morning. And then eventually a game started at 1. And what's crazy about this stadium is it's almost like, I would say, the Rose Bowl in the sense of that when you drive up, you just see like the tip of it and you're like, We're, what's this? This is like a high school stadium, but it's built in <laughs> oh, to no like way. a bowl. So when you, like Dodger Stadium, yeah. when you go in the back yeah. of Dodger and you look and you see this expansive thing. Yep. And I mean, that crowd, I mean, it must have been like 10 degrees mm -hmm. and that crowd, every seat was full. Yep. And everyone was screaming and yelling the whole... Uh, and this was in the 90s, so uh, this was just totally past good. the Jim Kelly, okay. uh, Thurman Thomas, but they still were really good. Still running, okay. That's incredible. Yeah. And that's wow. a tip. So sleeping and camping overnight on a yeah. Saturday yeah. is yeah. very typical. Oh, wow. And a lot sundown, of people stay till Monday. So they'll stay, so you tell, and if we win, yeah. they'll stay till Tuesday. Yeah. And then the other thing to get <laughs> your hockey great. thing is I we went to a couple games in the odd. Oh, that's, that's What's a that? beautiful place. That was Am the I old, like old totally auditorium. out of the old oh. auditorium. So yeah. that's where the Buffalo Sabres played. Yeah, before they moved to Marine. Cool. Marine was it Marine Midland? Marine Midland. Yeah. So that I went Buffalo became Sports. became HSBC, then First Niagara. All right. Well, I have Dang. a big issue with you this weekend. Maybe we'll bet the <laughs> SAT on it because I'm a what? Dolphins fan. Oh. And uh, I, we're, we're playing up in Buffalo. Sure. And that's not going to end well. No. What's the spread? Did you, did you uh, that? It's huge. It's double um, digits? Or? I'll look it up while Lex <laughs> asks you another question, oh, but yeah. it's because she, she doesn't have good, even though your football team got better yesterday. My football team got better yesterday, so I'm from Arizona. Okay. So like by default, I'm a Cardinals fan. Sure. But I was just thinking about it and I was like, oh my gosh, like we have the Bills, we have the Dolphins, we have mm -hmm. the Cardinals. Like 
how did we end up with these teams? Yeah. I just, I don't know. But yeah. yesterday was yesterday was a big win for me. I'll take it. That's, I mean, that, that was, was a huge upset. one. That was yeah. a huge upset. Yeah, and I got it in my Pick'em League, yeah, which I, I was that one really too. pumped about. I don't I don't think the Falcons are good. This just in. This just in. <laughs> All right, the hold Falcons on. I'm trying to look up the line here for football, NFL, uh, week seven. What do we got? 16 and a half. Yeesh. Holy smoke. That's not enough. That's not enough? Have you seen the Dolphins? I've watched every one of their games. <laughs> Like a true Actually, fan. Uh, honestly, I took them to cover yesterday. Well, they covered. They covered they in the covered. last 10 seconds. You know, it's funny. It's, it's <laughs> funny. Somebody, nuts. this will be my Dolphins rant, and then I'll stop. Somebody yep. brought up to me, like, that was the crappiest play call ever for the two-point conversion. Like, they shouldn't have done it. Yeah. They should have just kicked no, the. they should have. She, A, they definitely should have gone 100%. for two. 100%. B, the play they ran was the exact same play that the Patriots, with the same offensive coordinator, ran when they beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl. See. The play works. You know what doesn't work? Having Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick <laughs> and Kenyon Drake and this Bill. whole team. Yeah, exactly. I the think play's it perfect. Play it's it's the players that didn't work. You're 0-5 and, and you have a chance to win with a two-point conversion. You go for that every oh, season. That was my whole season. You know what I was just thinking, though, as we're talking about this? I'm thinking, why don't more people uh, tailgate golf professional golf well oh. you know why it's it's because golf starts really early and it goes forever yeah that's, that's so case. like like you can't that's why like if you think about it golf is the only show they try to yeah. do it you really can't have a pregame show for golf because like think about it like when i'm my, my yeah. two of my favorite shows on sports okay are the inside the nba guys sure and i love the fox uh major league baseball okay. with poppy and a rod yeah. and frank and, and kevin burkhart i love those two shows but if they had those shows, instead yep. of showing me the actual game, yep. I'd lose my mind. I love it. So whenever there's a pregame show for golf on, all you're doing is proving to me you can show me the golf and you're choosing not to. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I don't know. I Here's the thing for me. Tailgating was like pretty normal when I was at U of A. And then I went to Phoenix and I was at ASU. And they don't allow tailgating anymore. See, so that's like, how terrible is that? That's and when awful. you do tailgate, you're in like a parking lot that's like 20 minutes from the stadium. Yeah, see, that doesn't make sense. That, has, that you does a, you no good. The guy I'd want to tailgate, though, would be John Daly. Could oh, you imagine yeah. tailgating with him? I don't yeah. think I could do it. <laughs> so I mean, I definitely like, couldn't your liver hang. Would give out or what? Well, your liver would get out. You get secondhand smoke, poison. <laughs> so I got a quick funny story yeah, to tell. Yeah, tell us we're a John in, Daly story. We're in Nashville, and then we're at this, I told you this, mm -hmm. Lex, but we're in this hole-in-a-wall place, maybe fitting 30, 40 people. And there's a band playing. This place is so old school that there's a smoking section and a non-smoking section. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, my God. Well, That's in I can guess where John Daly was. <laughs> in comes John Daly oh, wearing a triple XL uh, Dallas Cowboys shirt. He's got wow. the hat that's white that's a little slightly tinted yellow. Ooh. And he gets, so I'm thinking, like, what's his next move? Well, he get, gets a drink, goes up to the mic. This band is, like, legit. Mm -hmm. Goes up to the mic. They welcome him. He sang for yeah. two and a half hours. He's a country singer. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> he killed it. Yeah. He, he can sing country. Unbelievable. Yeah, and the cigarettes just help his voice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Give it the man. rasp. Yeah. All right, who, who's the best concert you've seen since you've uh, been in Nashville? Oh, best concert. Um, I'm a big Luke Holmes guy. Luke Holmes. I love yeah. Luke Holmes. And, and this is country music, I assume? Country yeah, you music. don't. He's Jeff's not, Jeff's not a big guy. country guy. Yeah. I, I, I'm less than a big country guy. Vince Gill's my country. And that's because Vince well, Gill plays with the Eagles. Vince was awesome. Vince actually, <laughs> and he came in here. Yeah, oh, Vince cool. came to do our show, and um, a couple other guys we've made like some wedges for and stuff, like Cole Swindell, who's yeah. actually going to be here this weekend. Oh, oh yeah, you go. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, that would be, a fun, be fun. Show. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Mm -hmm. It'd be a really fun show. That's I cool. I used to love going to Nashville yeah. to do Vanderbilt games. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. Those, those are some of my favorite ones: San Antonio Taco, uh, the Pantry. Pantry. I haven't been to the pantry. Oh yet. God, it's one of the better breakfasts. Is it good? Uh, is it pantry or pancake pantry? It's oh, uh, no. just th th these pancakes are like out of control. To die for, huh? Yeah, really good <laughs> spot. Yeah, the down, Nash Vegas, downtown Nashville these days. It's it's wild. I haven't yeah. been in. It, eight there's some years. good golf there too. There there's is some, some good really golf. good golf. We actually live right by a golf course there. Oh, nice. So, oh, cool. Yeah. There's yeah. a new Discovery property going in there. Um, our buddy Golden Tate just bought a place in there. Oh, nice! And he's because he's he's from Nashville. I benched him this weekend, oh, and I was did you? Pissed. He had a good game. He had a really he did, good game. Twenty three points, but I yeah. still won. So oh, I'm nice. now he's two and Nashville. four. Uh, in, in <laughs> I the greatest, like, I, I probably way. Lex have the worst fantasy team. I got kicked out of the work league, by the way. Oh, but okay. The, you didn't get non, kicked out. Wait, you didn't get kicked out. We're just going to stay with you. Can we back up? Luke kicked me out because he wanted Tony to. You had the chance to do an auto draft. I was on a plane. 
could have auto-drafted. Yeah, no one likes to auto-draft. Yeah. So in this league <laughs> I've been in since, like, college, yep. we literally have the worst team. We've scored the least points and whatever, okay. and we're about to be 4-2. It just shows you how dumb fantasy football That's is. Crazy. We actually made the move this morning. Like, I felt really shady doing it. Mm-hmm. We uh-huh. bent, We had one player left. We're up, like, by a third of a point. Okay. So we benched our last player in there so he doesn't yeah. fumble and lose, and we put a guy who's on a buy-in. That's so we've wow. That's nice. so I feel good about myself. You should feel, feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Four and two with this crappy well, team. Good. good job, Mark. <laughs> and you're benching players. That's good. Yeah, we're benching players <laughs> yeah. who are actually playing. All right. Uh, what about speaking of American football? Is Caitlin coming around to American football? We talked about it when she was here last time. She didn't seem so uh, excited. Yeah, so she has come full circle. So there's the way I got her into it was she first didn't understand the rules. So we had to break down the basics. Okay. Now, you, you bring her to a hockey rink. She knows everything. Strategy, Canadian. Breakouts, right. power yeah, plays. That's part of being Canadian. Yeah, that's yeah. their yeah. SAT, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But so what I did with her, because Caitlin is super competitive, is I was like, why don't we bet on a game? And she's like, you can do that? Oh. I was like, yeah, we're going to bet 50 bucks on a game. And you should have seen her eyes light up. <laughs> she's yelling at the table. She's oh, buying nice. a shot. We, we celebrate. I'm like, this is it. So I found the motivating factor. Huh. Mm-hmm. Competition. Who's her team? And now so she's she's now part of the Bills Mafia. Wow. Oh, nice. Well, I, I, I do have to say, I have so much respect for Buffalo fans <laughs> yeah. because, like I said, we probably went to one game of Europe there. Mm-hmm. It's not luxurious. It's it's not <laughs> no. like like compared to no. you know, the weather certainly isn't any good. I That's wouldn't know weird. anything and, about that kind and of these, weather. And like what I remember was, God, I'm trying to think who your fullback was. But like literally it was like one of the first or second plays of the game. Okay. And you have to understand, growing up in Miami, we had the most fair weather fans in the world. Sure. From when I started third grade mm-hmm. until I went to college, the college team, the Hurricanes, yep. didn't lose a game. They set an all-time record. They won 56 games in a road home, and you'd only sell out three games a year. If Notre Dame came in, uh, Florida or Florida State. If you'd get another team, you could have a top 10 team, and they wouldn't sell it because it was just, mm-hmm. ah, Miami's going to win. There's so many other things to do. That's crazy. A Buffalo fan, like, they're selling and they, their fullback will get, like, two yards on a dive, and you'd yeah. think they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> We're going nuts. Yeah. We're, it's just awesome. Have, we still haven't won a Super Bowl. We're over four. I know. Yeah. Well, that's that. That's due to change. I like your coach. Yeah. I like coach the quarterback. Quarterback. Quarterbacks. He's doing all right. Yeah. It's really, I like the him. defense is incre- the defense is solid. Totally. And that's how we structure the team. We got you need some wideouts. We need some wideouts. We need a little bit of fire up top. Yeah. But, but ne- next year's like the best wideout draft in like the history of the NFL. Apparently. Yeah. Next year's that's what everyone says. Next year's. I watched that Oklahoma kid. The. Uh, C D Lamb. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I want him on that He's team. Incredible. And then the kid, the guy from Alabama. Uh, Judy, yep. that guy's ridiculous. I shouldn't yeah. say this, but I'm going to say it. Miami covers this week. Tell 16 and a half? <laughs> you think they cover? <laughs> You'll be taking cover. the SAT. Oh, my cover. God. There's Let's no go. way. Do you want to know where there. I heard that bet? Yeah. On my date last night. What? Oh. Yeah. You're going there. I'm, I am. I took right. it there. You told me that I should. So, well, I, I encourage it. question? Yeah. So, where, like, I'm curious. Is it about her date? Yes. Okay, oh, good. We're going into it. So, what, uh, like, where do you meet someone today? Online. What, what, like, is the best site to use? Oh, I don't know about that. I was only on one, and I really don't want to say the name. Okay. Because I saw somebody else, I saw somebody that's, like, work adjacent on yeah. another one. Yeah. And I was like, I think the best it. place to meet people is on reality television. Yeah, well, that's what I was. That's where I was going. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, you got to Chris. I know we have Chris well, to get her point. on the show. <laughs> I have no proof that you've actually asked, but I told you that I would have gone on Peter season. I know. However, ah. you would have had to sacrifice me for product videos. Correct. There was that was number oh, one. Okay. Number two, <laughs> I wasn't supposed to know that it was Peter season when you asked about Peter season. So therefore, I no, couldn't have committed. That's to not that. true. I think we had like a week of like time to get me there although we would have had i would have expensed all of my clothing for the show yeah which is very fair we'd be broke good brand yeah we'd be broke (laughs) i don't know i think maybe callaway just needs to get into the uh the reality dating game shows maybe can't be any more non-branded than this show i feel like this headquarters we get a date there's a lot of action going on i know there's a lot going on here we have a dog here today dogs here we have coffee podcasts yeah Yeah, there's lots of places awesome I know. It's it's <laughs> this is this place is incredible. Plus, you got the test center. You could always go down there. Exactly. To be one of the remote uh, exotic options. locations, could exactly. be like a mile away to the test center. <laughs> you should compare swing speeds and <laughs> set people up. Wow. Sounds like a way to find love. That sounds like that should be in the dating profile. <laughs> it sounds, that swing sounds speed. like it swing, speed. <laughs> swing speed. Swing speed. Swing speed. What was your swing speed today? Uh, Ninety-eight point six. Also, body point, temperature. I was thinking about it. Ninety-eight <laughs> point something. That's awesome. Yeah. 
That's movement. Hockey. Slap shot. I Might played hockey. Did you? Up. Yeah. So I got that slap shot. Oh, took more we have Scott, Scott Gorl here played played oh, hockey. Get out of here. Yeah, he was a uh, high school champion uh, multiple times in New Hampshire. Wow. Look at <laughs> I guess that. you guys didn't play each other. No, we didn't, we didn't cross paths. States. We didn't cross paths. Yeah. Scott now uses hockey as an excuse to get hurt and not have to go to the PGA show. It does uh, often get hurt right, right around right before the PGA show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How convenient. Yeah, strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Amazing. What else we got to cover? I think we've said it all. Pretty much right. said it all. Can we promote the Girls in Golf podcast? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can check out Girls in Golf on CallawayGolf.com featuring Caitlin Bristow and, um, let's see, Julie Williams and the girls of Gruder Golf next okay. week. And maybe We're the doing... Golden Retriever. And hopefully yeah. Can you Robin. tell me about, about the Golden? Yes, it's a it's a great... By the way, you got totally off by passing on the date. We could have totally drilled down on that. We let it, I know. Go. <laughs> let it go. Maybe do it the Girls in Golf You can show. talk to me but, offline. But So real quickly, Ramen, we adopted him. There's an agency. Ramen? Ramen. The like Golden the Noodle? Noodle, yeah. So the reason huh. is, is that was his name. There's an agency out of LA that adopts dogs that are headed to literally like the meat shop uh-huh. in South Korea. So oh he, my God. Had, he was found um, with a broken leg and a broken pelvis. The agency adopted him. They put um, fundraising up on their site for his surgery. We donated to the surgery. Surgery worked out. He came up for adoption and we adopted him and they, uh, we oh got my him God. from Korea in June. Wow. So, yeah. I know. Isn't that crazy? He's just a ball of joy. He's the man. Holy cow. Yeah, he's the man. And he's one a service of, dog. One of the women that works there is local right yes. or like the organization yep, is local yeah. so it's bunny's buddies they're out of oh yeah you know what they're out of san diego mm-hmm. oh we're in and san diego and we're in san yeah. diego and amanda uh, runs the organization and she does an unbelievable job that is so saves cool thousands of dogs a year yeah, yeah. it's wow. really cool so i would love to get a dog except for i'm not home enough it's a lot yeah that's, but that's, you you plus love the cat the, the cat would cat. Yeah, the cat would hate cat. it yeah. Yeah. cat guy the cat would hate it and what would you do during the bachelor you, you, the part of the routine is the your do- cats the with The dog you. would probably go sit with them and yeah, watch The Bachelor I mean. and leave the cat so. by me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cat, the, Lex saw the cat Saturday. Yeah. I did. So the cat has this this, <laughs> oh this new thing now. So every Saturday for him is Catterday. He gets because the humans are home. So he gets to go outside all day. <laughs> and and the rule is we live right by the, the canyon in Torrey Pines here. Okay. Oh, so nice. as soon as it gets dark, the cat turns into coyote bait. Okay. So the cat <laughs> has to come in. So I will give him credit. Yesterday on Sunday, because uh-huh. um, again, this is a three-day pod, yeah. I, I yelled at 6.25. I'm like, hey, buddy, you got five minutes left and you got to come in. It's starting to get dark. At 6.30 on his own, Miles came walking in. So I'm convinced wow. he's freaking smart because there's a clock what. up there and he, he can look. But on, pretty smart. But on, on, on Saturday, Saturday, for what, different. a good hour... He, he just like, sat there meowing at the door. He sat, well, he was meowing at his own reflection. So we, he saw another cat outside. We tried to, <laughs> to tell him okay. it was another yeah. one. But okay. his age is starting to show. He had like a little little hop oh getting up, yeah. getting oh up oh from boy. the door. So. But the good news is we, we discovered uh, we had a good, you know, he likes treats, okay. Okay. but he's getting older, so so hard food is not his friend. Gotcha. So no. Paige got him some soft treats. That's perfect. And he likes them. You, you yeah. can't beat that. Yeah. It sounds like he's yeah. got the street smarts, but maybe not the uh, SAT smarts. Yeah. I don't know. You know what? If he took the SAT, I don't know what he would get. He'd probably. He'd probably what? Do pretty I was well. trying to he's think of like what a cat's favorite number would <laughs> be, <laughs> but I, I, I can't. I don't know. <laughs> I can't but, do but that. But the good thing about the, the Siamese cat is he, he, I left him this morning at 7.30 in the morning, yeah. and I'll be the first one home at 5.30-ish, and he'll be just fine. That's amazing. He'll be a little hungry. Can't do can't that. Do that with a dog. Cannot do that mm. with a dog. No. So you, you travel dog with a dog. is in your office right now. Yeah. I know. I can't wait. So he's a registered emotional support dog. So yeah. Caitlin has anxiety. He works with her anxiety. And as a result of that, he can travel with us anywhere we go. Oh. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. That is brilliant. you got to love 2019. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. i got to tell you what. In 1990, whatever, or 1960 Buffalo, yep. they were not <laughs> giving you like, like emotional support. Support no, dogs. No, no, they no, would no. say, "Shut up and go Shut work." Up. <laughs> Shut up. Chug a beer and go to work. Exactly. All right, Jason. Where can people follow you? Yeah. So on my Instagram, Jason underscore Tardic. On my Twitter, it's the same, Jason underscore Tardic. And also working on uh, a YouTube series that we mm-hmm. kind of alluded to nice. called Restart, and it's uh, to like give it. people tips and life hacks as they're. All right. Well, I'm going to start watching this because Lord knows I need pursuit. Them. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for spending yeah, some time yeah, with thank us. Thank you. Happy. And you can listen to 85 other podcasts that we're recording today. Yeah. The next couple days, right? Fitting Room, Girls yeah, lots and of Golf. Fitting Room, Putter Pod Putter with Sean Pod. and Luke. That was really good. I listened to that. Yeah. I dove in and listened to that. That was really good. They talked a lot about the putter. I was going to say, Jason should listen oh, man, to it to find wait. out about his putter. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Because if you listen to that podcast, you'll be able to tell everybody why this putter is the greatest putter <laughs> in the world. And everyone's going to, we'll like triple our sales in the Nashville slash Buffalo area. Done. Swipe All up. Right. On <laughs> yes. Thursday, we have two guests on the podcast. We do? Yeah. We have Shane Bot and Shane Wu. Oh, <laughs> They're like, actually the same what? person. Do you ever have someone like that online who has two different online personalities? 
No. We have a super Shane. so so we don't call them super fans because no. that's Howard's term. But okay. we have this this group A15. of fans we call it A15, which is okay. all 15 clubs and the ball. Okay, they're only the highest of Cowboy fans. And Lex mm-hmm. and Finley interview them, and we get to hear oh. their stories. We've had Ramon, we've had John Jarvis, we've had David we have Orlazer. not had John Jarvis. We haven't had John Jarvis. I don't think so. Why not? I mean, I wasn't a part John of Jarvis. that in- interview. If we did, yes, we did. <laughs> we I had, we did. yeah. Uh, where did you start? You started Ramon, at Ramon, David Horlander. Yeah. I think that was the only two we've done. Have I really only done two? I thought we did a third. Hmm. But we have Shane Bot and Shane Wu, so we'll count and that as two. And Shane Yu. Actually, technically, he's like three or four. Three personalities? People. Yeah. Right. Well, if you have questions for either Shane Bot or Shane Wu or Shane Yu, 760-804-GOLF, <laughs> fill up the inbox. Please. Chip show at CallawayGolf.com. If you have questions for Jason, just email us and Lex will text Pass him, him on. and we'll get some answers. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Done and done. We will see, I will see you guys next Tuesday. Am I here next Tuesday? I don't, I think I don't I, know. Hopefully with the Yankees uh, World Series update. Oh, yeah. If not, I'm going to strike this line and pretend that didn't happen. Thanks, everybody, for listening to The Ship Show. <laughs>